Okay, this is our type Leo on the arcade. And I think with our type, it's a game that a lot of people have heard of. And particularly with, I suppose, the first game being ported to so many platforms, it's quite easy really to have, have played that game in its in its history really. But the the second game, I think a lot of people have played on the Amiga and have played to an extent with Super R-Type on the SNES, which was almost like a hybrid of the first two. But this one, I don't hear much about. I think, it, or at least I'm, I'm not aware of it being ported to anything outside the arcade. And when there was a third version in, in the home, it was R-Type 3, which is a, a totally different game. So this, at least in my, in my mind, was always R-Type 3. I, I didn't play the SNES version of R-Type 3 until probably about late 90s, uh, or even early 2000s. But this one's a little bit different because, I mean, graphically, it looks slightly more almost anime style, more, well, I don't want to say arcade because it's an arcade game, but it, it's a bit more um, cartoony perhaps. And w with the first R-Type, it's very... Well, it's, I wouldn't say it's rigid, but it, it moves in a particular way and there's a certain almost discipline with it. And the second game is quite similar, but this one feels a lot looser. So what you've got, very similar to the first game and the second one, you've got this support unit and you can fire it off. But with this, you can just, as you see there, you press the second button and it, it homes in, which is really cool. Uh, and it might seem like a little bit of a cheat, but... <laughs> later in the game it's certainly not, it gets a lot harder. And the other thing you've got is if you press forward you fire backwards, if you press back you fire forwards which means you don't have to fire the support unit off. So this boss here is hard. Another credit. This boss is very similar to the first game you just you fire your support unit into the middle and keep firing. There we go. I used to play this game quite a lot in, in Scarborough, they used to have it at the Olympia and uh, I suppose for anyone who is familiar with it, it's the bit at the top near what was the pool table area and I don't remember anyone ever playing it because this would have been probably... I played it a little bit before then but I think when I used to live there from around 2000 onwards it would have looked out, you know, dated, unless you were a retro gamer, which I suppose it wasn't trendy or popular at that point. And this this machine was dirt cheap, and and it used to get ignored. And I remember playing on it loads. Oh crap! Ah, there we go. But graphically, it's lovely. I think it it is different to the the original R type games. And I think if you were a fan of those and 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 like the art style, this might seem a little bit strange and a little bit different but I think coming back to it now after all this time because it came out 1992 so we're you know 21 years ago and all the shoot 'em ups that have come since this really is quite groundbreaking in its graphical style and I think a lot of the games really followed this on so I'm thinking almost like your, your Dodon Patchy games that are very colourful and very cartoony and I know they're not the same as this but you see what I mean, kind of. <laughs> I remember playing this and then thinking, oh, okay, you know, it looks good, but does it look any better than the original R type? And then I remember looking at the original R type and it looks so plain in comparison. Oh dear. Have they got their brains exposed? I think so. I think this is the boss. Uh, yeah, that seems like such a cheaty thing just to have this auto, um, ah, this auto aiming thing. But as you'll see in the next stage, it, it's hard. 
perhaps doing auto aiming and shooting too much is not a good thing because well you'll you'll see it. This has reminded me a little bit of Insector X on the Mega Drive. But with some of the enemies on here, it's almost like those asteroids in the first level. If you shoot them, they fire things out. So you've almost got to be strategic about what you shoot and what you don't. There's enough bullets on screen for it to be fun, but not quite bullet hell. I, I, I don't think shoot them up to... Ah! Another credit. I don't think shoot 'em ups had really got to that stage yet, whereas the mid 90s, the particular games from companies like Cave, it, it was just. I'm not sure if it was memorization or reflexes or probably both, but they just got so hard and. and I won't say they weren't fun, but they, they, they changed the character of the game, whereas this is more traditional, as in you just. You could, as long as you watch everything and you can track where things are, you should be okay. It's not a case of just. 100% reflexes. Oh dear. Yeah, I never quite got on with R Type 3 quite as well. I, I don't know, I've played it a few times on the SNES and I've, I've got it on the, the Wii Virtual Console and it doesn't. I'm not sure if it feels like a step back, but it feels more like the original two R Type games and. I don't know. It, it's nice visually, and I think it, it it looks, you know, like it's making use of the SNES hardware. But I, I don't know. I, I need to give it another try. I, I think it's a shame, really, that that like with Super R Type, it was this combination of the first two games and didn't really use the hardware properly. And I'm wondering, maybe if this had come out a little bit earlier, because uh, this came out just after Super R Type, whether if this had been the launch game for the, the SNES, whether it would have had a better reputation. But, alas, it didn't. Oh. Come on! Oh, crap, another credit. Yeah, the, the, the bosses on this are fairly similar. Uh, I suppose I like the first game because you've got that weird worm thing on the second level. Three, two, one. Let's go. Oh dear. Yeah, this is the floating island stage. I wasn't that impressed when I first saw this because I thought, oh, it's just like... Oh, oh dear. It's just like a, like a Mega Drive game really with the, the sprites and, and whatnot. But it does get a bit more impressive as, as you get onto the floating island. Oh, oh, oh. Bit of bullet hell there. Yeah, I was a bit confused when I first saw this and I thought, why is some of the scenery going backwards and why some going forwards and then I realised, ah, it's the floating island that you're flying around. Ah. Yeah, th this is why having that auto-aiming support unit is not cheap, <laughs> because it gets really hard and you'd be, you'd be knackered without it. But I think it's really nice that the, the designers of the game, another credit, decided to do something different, because I think the first two R-Type games were fairly similar. Uh, I wouldn't say they were... Well, hmm. It's almost like having an add-on pack to the first game, just more levels. Ah, oh, I've lost the support unit. Um, but this, this, you know, visually and the way it plays and the art direction, everything is so different. But even in, you know, 1992, it it it's a step up than certainly looks better than anything you get on a Mega Drive and I think I might even say it looks better than anything you'd get on a SNES so it's almost like your Neo Geo quality graphics like games like Last Hope that were really nice they had a lot of animation in them not sure what arcade board this is using it's probably 
probably something with a 68k in it, but I don't know. I don't think it's a Neo Geo board. I'm not aware of Irem, 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 however you pronounce it, um, making games on that hardware. I'll have to have a look. But it looks nice anyway. <laughs> Get the sport unit. Come on. Oh, that's that's not right. Oh, this is almost like your bullet hell now. Oh crap! Is that it? Yeah, I think I'll leave it there. I don't want to spoil the end of the game. It's... Oh, right. Yep, definitely leave it there. Yeah, so just to conclude... I remember when I first played it and I I, I was a bit put out by this game. I, I, it's, I looked at it and I thought it's a bit too different and I wasn't that keen. But I think looking back now, I think I actually prefer this to the original R-Type games. So I think if you play the first two and you want a game that's a little bit like R-Type but not exactly the same as the first two, you might enjoy it. I think if you want more of the same as, as the first two games then probably go with R-Type 3 on the snares but I think if, if you want something different... That was terrible! I lost three lives in there. <laughs> five... No, not five minutes, two minutes. Anyway, right. I'll leave it there. Enough waffling. So yeah, it's a good game, and uh, I, I think if you get to see this in the arcades, definitely try it out. Thanks for watching.